Hi, today we're going to introduce a small tool called Snap to Wall. It's over here. But before we dive into what it does, let's uh, take a look at this model. It's going to provide us with some context to the things we're going to talk in this video and the next video. This is a two-story exhibit slash office building that I did back at school. It has old glass panels, and back then the idea is that I can select individual panels and change them from a full clear version to a half clear version or to a solid version. Let's change that back. And let's take a look at the floor plans. On level one, we have gift shop, lobby, open atrium, cafe, and exhibits to uh, showcase any kind of interesting things that this research center is making. And on level two, we have the seminar rooms for meetings, office for staffs, open office, conference rooms, and these supporting areas on both levels. So um, yeah, it provides some basic background elements for the things we're about to talk. Now on to the actual stuff we're going to discuss. Here we have two elements, the outlet and a card reader. We're using symbols to, recommend, uh, to demonstrate them because if I toggle to fine, you see the actual 3D element of these are very small compared to all the other backgrounds. Even the symbol is not too big, but always you can change them to use larger symbols. Both of them are freestanding element the idea is for you to drop them and you see the placement point, it can be highlighted so that it's snapped to the wall. These are different from the default Revit uh, outlet. Those ones are wall-based element, so they snap to the wall by default, and you cannot place them other places. So I cannot place these over here, but I can place these ones wherever I want. And let's take a look at them on 3D. So here we have these outlet, that's the rabbit one, this is the card reader. And these are the wall outlet. I also add the box which will sit inside the wall on these elements. But this is how it looks. And back to our topic. There are different um, pros and cons of using a uh, freestanding element or the wall based element, as in Revit default families. Uh, we're not going to talk about a lot about them, but uh, if we have a wall and we have these freestanding element and the default outlet, the difference is that if we 
happens to remove that wall, the wall-based elements are gone and the freestanding elements remains. And also there are different other pros and cons that we're not going to touch that much today. But let's talk about how to model these. So I have the carb readers. And let's say that for the exhibit, we're going to place carb readers, carb readers, carb readers, and carb readers. Just over here on both sides of the wall. And of course, we're going to apply car readers to the electrical and mechanical room. And let's add some outlet to mm, let's place one over here, one over here. You kind of see where I'm going with this because I'm not actually snapping them to the wall. We're going to rely on this Dynamo script to do that. So we kind of laid out, played some devices in the model. And this is where the snap to wall comes into play. The idea is for that each element will find the one that closest to the wall, the closest wall it has, and rotate itself and move it so that it is attached or snapped to the wall. And Here's how it's going to work. Again, we're using Revit 2018 because it provides these element information. So I'm already selecting these two families so that it will filter only those elements. And we have a maximum distance from background so that if we're going to place a device that is basically in the center of the building where it doesn't have any where it's not within like 10 feet from any wall it's not going to move those devices because we don't expect them to be moved well 10 feet is very long let's just use 3 instead and we're going to select the background element that we're going to snap to for this exercise, it's going to be walls. So I'm going to go to this view where I have only the walls. It's easier to do that here. Go select. Just going to grab everything here. So basically, I select most of them are walls. There are a couple curtain panel grid, but that's fine. We're going to go. So we select all these elements and back to here. Now we are all ready, set up. We're going to go and run. I'm in this selection mode. I can just drag select everything because I already built in the family types that we're using here today so that they will filter only those elements but we can always pick them one by one like that. Otherwise, we're going to go finish. And when it's done, we can see that all these elements have been nicely attached to the wall. And these ones, where it's not within three feet of any wall, they just remain in the center. Basically, that's how what it does. These tools will work no matter uh, on slanted walls as well. So basically, for example, I'm doing this. 
and I'm going to place that over here, over here, over here, just randomly. Even if I put them over here, it's going to snap them into positions. And not only just walls, they will recognize simple geometries like this one. If I select that, and let's just say I place randomly drop down devices over here. It will basically trace the um, projection curves about this element and always try to place devices on the exterior. So for example, I have something like this and I go run. I will select all the outlets and hit finish. See that it rotate themselves and placed around the wall. Uh, around this, this is not the wall. This is a desk. So basically, it provides some kind of consistencies or easy of placement. But when you're placing them manually, you can always like hit the space bars so that it rotate and place them in the way so that it snaps to the wall. But you will be able to see that in our next video that this snap to wall tool becomes very handy and it's actually making a good contribution to what we're trying to do. But for this one, we're going to end it over here. Thank you.